I was actually really excited. I was like, oh my gosh, me and Crystal are gonna have so much fun. Like I thought we were gonna be like the, the funny little silly ones together. Like I, I kind of like mourn what I thought we were going to be. Virtual reality. Hi, I'm Danny Murphy. And I'm Evan Real. And it's time to raise your glasses high because Evan, somehow it's been a year and Vanderpump Rules is back. Yes, it's back. We're in full swing, baby. And Danny, you and I were just talking about this, but I feel like our girl Lala Kent, oh. she's she's putting in the most work and good for her. She's given us Lala and she's given us storyline. Hey, Raquel. Um, I'm sure I'm like the last person you expected to hear from. And it's fast and it's action packed. And I just want to say thank you to our girl, uh, Lauren Kent. Oh, thank you. Lala, one of my favorite moments from last night was when, like, the, because she's always been so good at this, where she's like, Ariana, I don't know if you like me or tolerate me. And after Ariana's like, girl, I love you. Lala's like, okay, so anyway, I did DM. Really? I can't tell if, if you, like, like me or if you tolerate me at times. I like you. What? I... I'm feeling like, but I don't want her to wear this for the rest of her life. <laughs> like okay. The way she's able to like 360 her heart out is impeccable. I, when I saw that scene, I could not believe she was doing it right then. And Katie there. couldn't either. You saw her face. I know she was, I feel like all the girls were so shocked and, you know, to your point, I feel like Lala really did set herself up very well by sort of coercing Ariana into expressing her sheer love and admiration for her friendship with Lala before the bombshell came, which is that she sent this voice memo to uh, Ra Raquel over DM. And it looked to me like Ariana was exploding internally. Mm -hmm. It her tongue. She kept it cute. She gave Lala a hug and she was like, let's just move forward. And it just must be like really tough for Ariana because I think, you know, I feel like she wants the optics to be is that, you know, she's still cool with the girls. It's a girl gang, girl power, women supporting women, um, which we do love you. And I love that, of course. But then it like also doesn't really align with what she said as season 10 was wrapping up, which is like, if you have any interactions with Tom mm -hmm. Sandoval, I imagine also with Raquel, like I don't mess with you anymore so maybe her own rules are changing this was she got new rules she counts them Dua Lipa this is where I because I was curious about this because obviously after Scandaval all the girls were like we were riding for you we're on your side but I was really interested because I'm like y'all have been y'all before that were fighting and feuding a lot like it was Ariana and Katie always together and Lala and Sheena besides when Lala was like Sheena your wedding weekend isn't the most important thing to everybody else here one of the funniest moments of all time but though they, they they became a foursome kind of circumstantially because they were all they all had a common enemy but now that the common enemy is not present uh i'm kind of wondering if they're like okay well maybe we do have some unresolved stuff and like lala's like well why would i not jam raquel if i want to because ariana doesn't want me to i think there's a lot there's gonna be a lot of those moments of them like i ride for you but it's like a ride and like an Uber X, not an Uber XL. You know what I mean? Where she's like, I'm going to get out at my stop and do actually what I want to be doing. Right. And that's what she said on Watch What Happens Live. Lala was like, I do what I want, when I want, how I want, and who I want, who I want to do it with. So obviously this is what she wanted to do. There is kind of like a part of me that, and, and I know that Vanderpump Rules is reality TV, but these guys are performers. They're oh. Emmy-nominated stars. And I do feel like there is pressure to put on somewhat of a performance. And that's what I, that, that's what I appreciate mm. about these kids. And I feel like Lala might have been acting in the name of a future Emmy because unfortunately they did not win the Emmy <laughs> uh, this go around, but maybe next season. I think that was like going through her mind when she was like, I'm going to send a voice memo to Raquel because honestly I was gagged and gooped over it. I think that she and knew it right there on the loading dock of Tom Tom was a really great cinematic moment. She's trying to make it the new back alley of Sir, which I love. Right. <laughs> right. You know who, I, I don't know if she needs an Emmy. I think she needs maybe just all of our emotional support and, and oh. their pump rules. I feel so bad. I don't know what job list. This is how you know 
we're in like a recession and jobs are hard to come by that someone is like, yeah, I'll be Sandoval's assistant. Like, and like also wonder how much Sandoval is paying. She- and I hope she has dental. Oh, I- <laughs> I, I'm sure she has lovely teeth, but I'm just saying, I hope she's getting some benefits from this. Like she needs dental time off, like paid time off, mind you, and all that stuff. Cause the cringing of her having to like, uh, communicate between the two of them in the house and everything like that and like the sneak peek for next week where like she has to tell Ariana that Tom wants a party and Ariana gets like obviously she's not mad at Anne but like the anger comes out where Anne I just feels like carrying a lot on her back oh my god totally I, I can't imagine being Anne in this situation I don't know like you said maybe it's the, the fact that we're like in a recession and times are tough that she accepted this job not even just for the simple fact of working for Tom Sandoval in the wake of Scandoval but like the very awkward situation she's in having to constantly go between Sandoval and Ariana and Ariana is not going to be like overly kind to you no. it's, it's gonna, like be this sort of like hamster wheel of like tension and like I don't know like resistance because what did Ariana say when uh, there's supposed to be a birthday but she was like if there's people here I'm calling the cops calling the police She's she's that Celine Dion meme. Yeah. Jake telephone la policia. And I was like, and Ariana was like, and you let him know that. Sandoval did apparently offer her a nice hotel, uh, which I'm like, I would have just taken to get out of the freaking house. I'm like, oh, huh. but I'm just like very curious now. Anne has to go back and tell Sandoval that. And I feel he'll probably have a party anyway. And like, you know what I mean? It's just such a losing game of a mess, which I feel is kind of how LVP felt about Raquel going on Bethany's podcast. She was like, this is a losing game. I think maybe for LVP, she's like, where is where is my chance to chat? But she had some thoughts about that when you talked to her. So, you know, I think if she could have come back and really spoken her truth to me, because she knows I'm not going to be judgmental. I'm going to listen and give her a moment. That would be to speak to all the people that were so involved in the story. Yeah, I mean, Lisa Vanderpump was d- disappointed that Raquel shared her post scandal story with uh, Bethany Frankel on her podcast. And in true Bethany fashion, Bethany caught wind of my little chat with LVP and she clapped back. Cry me a river. Where was she going to share her story? At pump? Over some rosé that she's recovered from? And trauma? I don't think so. And said a lot of things that were not, <laughs> that were not very nice. I think she called her jealous and bitter. But she called her jealous and bitter, but then also said, I like LVP. I hope you're happy with Bravo. Sorry, not sorry. We're still all bitter that Raquel months ago came on my podcast and is thrilled she did. So it was a a, a very mixed bag of something going on there. But in classic Just Be fashion, (laughs) you get a lot of sides. She did kind of make a point. Like after the year that Rachel had within the pump universe like what was she gonna do like go grab a you know go grab a glass of Vanderpump Rosé and like talk about it in the Tom Tom loading dock like, I I don't know maybe I, honestly I'd rather go to Connecticut and chat with Bethany about it because oh. you probably just felt like after the reunion like cheese grater and everything else like you know it's, it might not have been the safest place and it's so interesting now to see like everyone saying like I wish she would have come back she should have come back like she deserve to share her side of the story etc cetera, etc cetera. and then that also has me thinking that I predict the same trajectory for Monica in Salt Lake City like next season when we're asking all the Salt Lake City girls uh, do you wish like how do you think this mm. season they're gonna be like oh we wish she would have come back to tell her story that's just like how it is everybody needs their cooling off period I guess that's true everyone needs to cool off but I don't know if Monica will go to Bethany's podcast because when someone made up a fake tweet about that happening Monica was like no well, it's, that's interesting. And that tells me that Monica definitely wants to stay in Bravo and NBC well, Universe with good graces because I know she's gunning for that spot on the Traders. Because I saw Ricky was talking to her in Vegas where she wants to be on the Traders. And also she was like, didn't she tell the ladies to grow up and like just film with her again? Yeah, she said, put your big girl panties on and let's let's film this thing. <laughs> let's I, film this. Which I mean, I would I would happily watch. I'm, Mary said she'll film with her. So. Mary said she'll film it. She Wait, has also- her big girl panties strapped on. Oh, Sunrise, sunset. Uh, mm-hmm. Lala also regretted sending that voice memo because she was like, if I knew she was going to go on Bethany's podcast, I would not have sent it. But, uh, and I, I, wish I, she, I wish that she expounded on that a little yeah. bit. Like, what 
did you mean by that, Lala? Were you upset that she went to Bethany instead of Lisa Vanderpump, that she went to Bethany instead of coming back to Vanderpump Rules? Or were you upset with the things that she said on Bethany's podcast? You know what? She's probably upset that Rachel didn't come to the Give Them Lala podcast because that would have been really big. For that that would have been... Imagine the drama that would have incited. That would have been everything. I feel like no hugs from Ariana if she came on the podcast. Oh, no, 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 no. Ariana would be, they wouldn't be having the girls night with the, with the ranch dip type of thing, which I was like, when does Lala like ranch? I thought that was Stassi's thing. I was like, We're... yeah, that it's so funny. Like just thinking about Stassi, I feel like Stassi's also been like sprinkling about her opinions as the Valley cast has been. Oh. And, everything. and when I was watching Lala on watch what happens live the other night and they did like the, the poll, like who do you, who would you trust the most of these four core girls, which is Ariana, Lala, Sheena and Katie. I I forgot that Stassi was ever on the show. I forgot that Kristen was ever on the show. It just kind of seems like these are the core four now. And this is like how it always will be and how, how it always should have been. But then we were reminded that Kristen is still in the mix because Lala's like, we're still feuding, baby. And we don't really know why. Do, you know, do we know why? I don't know. What, something about podcast, something with podcasting. And I don't, the Vanderpump and the Valley people, they love to podcast. I, like, I I I missed the episode. I think where whatever drama they had happen happened. Yeah, I need a. We need to go do our research because I have no idea what is going on between them. Not that it's really ever a uh, a friendship I was invested in. The best was actually when Chris. I don't know if you remember this from like seasons ago, but when Kristen was doing some sort of speech at uh, Katie and Tom's wedding celebrations or something, and Lala's like, "Wrap it up." Remember oh, that? Oh, yes. So good. That's a really underrated moment in Vanderpump history. Lala has a lot of underrated moments. I love it. She's great. Because everyone goes, are you trying to get popped? But Wrap It Up's also up there. Yeah, Wrap It Up, obviously Bambi-eyed bitch. But I, yeah, I do think that like Wrap It Up belongs. And, and I mean, maybe she wants it to be forgotten, but I really do think the telling Sheena her wedding's not that important <laughs> on her wedding weekend is really up there too. Yes, yes. And I mean, while we don't know why Lala and Kristen are feuding, we also don't know why... Kyle Richards and Morgan Wade uh, followed each other and did some Insta scrubbing. And this is so confusing to me because, you know, Morgan and, well, actually more Kyle. Morgan hasn't really, she has a little bit, but I feel like Kyle has really drilled into us. Like, we're just friends. Like, it's not this relationship that everybody assumes that it is. And of course, like, we take Kyle for, you know, her word and what she says and how she characterizes the relationship. But, I don't know. I just, that's not like typical best friend behavior to like scrub all images. It just feels so romantic. Because also I'm like, if you do that about a best friend, I'm like, oh, someone crossed a line. That and maybe is, that like, happened. Maybe possible, that possible. But I'm like, it's such a public setting. It's really, I, 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 I am very curious. And then also at the same time that she's wearing the jacket with Mauricio's last name on it and everything like that and selling Jeff Lewis. She can't imagine her life without him, which would just make sense even if they're separating. Like they've been together for so long and everything. But I'm like, there's a lot of layers going on for that. Yeah. And it happening yeah. right after the yeah. reunion. Like, yeah, I know. Yeah, it happened around like reunion time, the Mauricio jacket, like you said. It's just like very, very interesting. I don't I don't know what to make of it. I've been like obviously looking at all the comments and stuff on Instagram and social media. And people are just kind of like assuming or, you know, claiming that they believe Kyle, you know, used Morgan and then discarded her once she realized that she didn't need her. That doesn't feel that doesn't like read to me. No, it doesn't yeah. feel like Kyle spirit to me. But a lot of fans were going there, which I thought was really, really interesting. I, I don't know. It just it's such a bold message. And I feel like both of them knew that by scrubbing oh. from their accounts like it would of course create some discourse in the bravo fandom what so Bryn- yeah morgan and or kyle like we need answers like kyle go back on jeff lewis live and explain or her amazon thing or uh, do it on she amazon spills tea on that oh she, uh, the best tea comes from the amazon lives because those girls know they're getting a check and they know that they'll keep getting asked back because they're going to spill some tea that page six is going to cover. And that Amazon mention is going to be in there. So kudos to Amazon. And, kudos and Lala's to- buying the bag from Sheena. So it all works. Yeah, 
<laughs> exactly. Exactly. I don't know. I mean, if you had to assume what happened, what do you think happened? I feel, well, it's kind of like, because you know when Rinna told Denise in liking the tweet, it said everything? In scrubbing, it says everything. So I think, well, now I'm wondering because since Kyle said her and Morgan are just friends, I'm going to say that. I'm going to nod my head with that. I wonder if, because now she's seemingly getting closer again with Mauricio-ish or expressing more about him, if Morgan's like feeling a way about so you, the man that maybe, all this allegedly, the man that you were just like trashing for over a year to me while I've been supporting you, now you're wearing his jacket and talking yeah. all of this? I'm actually good. I'm okay. Like, maybe she wants off the ride. Right, right. And that kind of makes sense because like she became friends with Kyle as her relationship with Mauricio was in a vulnerable place and probably to your point she probably like didn't did talk a lot of smack with Morgan about it so yeah all of a sudden it's like okay so now you think he's cool and you were talking all this smack and blah 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 whatever like this isn't like the friendship that I thought because mm -hmm. how many times do, you, do everyone has that friend where it's like oh my god for six months they're like trashing the guy and then they come to brunch that one day it's like so we're back together and it's like what uh so frustrating when that happens. So, I mean, if that is what happened, like, I kind of understand where Morgan is coming from. But do you know what the interesting thing is? Speaking of Kyle and Jeff Lewis Live is, I feel like she did, she recorded that episode of Jeff Lewis Live before the Morgan friendship breakup oh. happened. Because she had some really interesting things to say about her friendships with Dorit and Sutton. But Dorit specifically, she was saying, like, Dorit made it, made it seem like I replaced her with Morgan, but my friendship with Morgan was far deeper and more meaningful than anything that Dorit and I ever shared. She was like, Dorit was never the first girl I called in the morning. Like we didn't keep in touch a daily. Like it wasn't like how it was with Morgan. Oh. So whatever happened with Morgan must've been real freaking recent. Shoot. And also, damn, Dorit's getting Instagram shade from Crystal and being told by her bestie, it ain't that deep. I know. I feel really, I feel bad for Dorit because my, our, our love for Dorit certainly uh, runs deep, but she has had, uh, had some hiccups to deal with this past season. I'm glad that she and Garcelle are in a good place and space that I was happy to see them sort of like tie up that disagreement in Spain because that was weighing on my spirit but it seems like we moved past it i think i think i think so until next week probably. we'll say we'll see what happens until until whatever goes on next week but i feel or until the reunion but i feel the reunion might actually be more just crystal and dorit but uh i'm excited to check that out too uh yeah and you got some reunion tea from miss anna marie the new bee uh the new bee yes oh she is new but she knows better than to spill too 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 much uh, with Bravo PR in the room. <laughs> she uh, did open up a little bit about what we can expect from the Kathy Hilton appearance and uh, how her, Kathy and Kyle, well, mainly Kathy and Kyle, had a little conversation. So here's what she had to say about that. Fans were that. really <laughs> surprised when Bravo's Insta account posted Kathy Hilton's trailer, yeah. which we can't get too much into. Yeah. But I am curious because you are Kyle's good friend. Mm -hmm. Do you feel she left the reunion in a better place with Kathy? Because I know obviously that has been a struggle for her for some years and it's been weighing on her a lot. Yeah, it's it's um, it's definitely been, um, it's been a path for the two of them, right? Mm -hmm. And I know it's something that they've been, they've been working on for a bit. And there were a lot of important things that they talked about at the reunion, that they talked through at the reunion. Um, and so I think people are going to, um, they're going to be very interested in the conversations that were had because they were very necessary. They were very deep and very necessary.